Welcome to Everything Hollywood. And good to see you, my friend Larry. How's uh, everything? Uh, everything's good. It's been a good week since we did the last show. And um, a lot of, lot of interesting stuff happening in the, the media world and stuff, which we'll get to, actually. We have an interesting guest. Yes, in I was going to say we have a great guest that just yeah. showed up. So I'm going to have you do the honor <laughs> in, in introducing her. So sure, you know, we'll, we'll start talking about the, the week in the, the entertainment world in a bit. But I'd like to introduce now Kayla, yeah, Kayla Methman. Kayla is... Um, known as uh, the heiress of the Kentucky Fried Chicken fortune. Um, she's also a, a designer. She's got her own, you know, apparel lines, uh, an actress, a producer, and, um, you know, various other things. So um, without delay, I would like to introduce Kayla. Hi, you Larry. Welcome <laughs> to the show. Thank, Thank you. For, uh, Thank okay. you guys so much for uh, the wonderful introduction. So I'm, I'm not an interesting character, first of all. I'm an amazing character. So let's okay. just be clear so about you're that. you're amazing character. <laughs> Why are you known as the fried chicken lady? What, what's the connection? Um, well, my grandfather provided uh, chicken for a KFC back in the 70s. So and that's it? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, he bought out KFC and he, he made it worldwide. And then we sold it to Pepsi in the 90s. Wow. So everyone likes to call me Kayla's freaking cool. So now, <laughs> uh, the question is, do you eat it yourself? Do you go to do you go to KFCs and order fried chicken? No, I go to the bar with you, Larry. Remember, we order that fried chicken just down the street here. Valley Inn. <laughs> Valley Inn. That's Great the best fried, fried chicken. chicken. No, I'm not going to go against KFC. I'm sorry. We do have the best fried chicken. Inside. It's better than all the chicken companies. So you you <laughs> were born in South Africa? No, yeah. actually I was born here in Santa Monica, Los Angeles. But the family is from South Africa. I yes, think. my mother's family is from uh, South Africa. And so kind of give us the uh, the short version of uh, how you've gone from, from, you know, then to, you know, where you are now and the kind of stuff you're doing. Okay. Um, well, you know, I... I grew up in LA. I, uh, I went to elementary school here in Los Angeles and I went to Beverly Hills High um, after that. Um, unfortunately, uh, my mom passed away. So I went to go live with my father in France. It was a really great experience. Um, I got to learn the French culture, speak the language, je parle aussi. I was able to uh, study, you know, couture there. I was able to go to what some of the most prestigious schools in fashion, and I was really lucky to be able to travel and do that. So I got my bachelor's in fashion design at S Mode. I got my uh, master's in art at Shanghai at IFA, and I went to Poli Moda in Italy. So it was really a great culture experience. I was never very close um, to my mom's family. Um, nor my father. Uh, my father is very religious, so uh, we don't have a very close bond. But so I left. Um, I left uh, home when I was 17, and after that, I went to New York. I interned for Vogue. It was a great experience. I lived in Chelsea. Um, you know, being young, 20, living in New York at that time, it was wonderful. Um, and uh, sadly, Hurricane Sandy hit, and I was like, no way. <laughs> and I didn't have any uh, friends at the time back then. So I decided to come to LA, and I got a little shop downtown, and I opened up my first little showroom. And from there, I dressed celebrities, and I was able to sell my products. And um, one day I woke up on the cover of Maxim USA, and it said KFC Eris. So I was like, okay. And ever since then, it's just been interviews and documentaries and fun stuff in the entertainment world, and I got into modeling, and then, I just got into so many other stuff and now I work for other brands and I design and it's just been such a wonderful, great experience and you know, I feel really privileged. You know, when I look at my life and throughout my past ten years in LA and, and, and everything I've gone through, it's been definitely ups and downs and it's definitely a crazy ride as a designer and having a creative lifestyle, but it was definitely worth it in the end. So, like, throw a few names with us. Like who wears your stuff? Oh, Larry, you know I can't do that. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. well uh, Celine Dion, Lisa Vanderbilt, Catherine Foster. Um, who else? Uh, oh, my God. A lot of the people from VH1, Erica Jane. Um, 
Uh, where do people find your stuff? I mean, uh, how you, do they buy your, your, your stuff, your designs? You can find it online at madamethman.com. Currently through COVID though, I closed my website uh, due to our factories were not open. So they've actually just reopened up, which is very, very exciting. So, uh, and I have a new line actually coming out called Madam Special K, which is more of an EDM festive line, which opens up June 15th. Wow, and oh. that'll be available online? Yes, online. I used to be available at a few showrooms, but you know, I took my stuff out due to COVID. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, things are kind of looking a little, a little different right now. So I'm gonna travel a little bit and see you in certain states. Now I know because of COVID, we have certain restrictions in certain places. So I'm gonna actually be traveling to Miami um, and to Texas and to a few of the states that are open and active to see if I can put some of my clothes in showrooms there, see what uh, shops are open, maybe open a retail store. So I'm kind of looking at those opportunities right now because you always have to say to yourself, in the entertainment world, when things go south, what do we do? You know, um, Calvin Klein, for example, in 2008, when the entire economy crashed and everyone lost their homes and millions of dollars at state, what did they do? I mean, they sold more socks and underwear and bras because people need it. So you always have to adapt. So if you know something isn't working at the moment somewhere, um, you've, you've got to move, make it work. You can't just sit. <laughs> now, you know, you and I know each other, and I know you've been working on, um, you know, uh, several TV show concepts and stuff. And, um, uh, you know, one of them is kind of a, uh, a reality show about your life and the things that go on in your day-to-day -day life. Um, Tell us a little bit about what you're developing in the TV world. Well, I was working with a company and I was working with them for a couple of years and we filmed mm -hmm. so many hours. They were such a great team. And it was kind of about me just kind of, you know, dressing celebrities, like going to red carpets, parties, and, you know, um, watching me do business deals and model and seeing me with my friends and my daily lifestyle. But sadly, due to COVID and everything, you know, the networks didn't really feel that my show was very fitting at the moment. So I'm going to try that a little later in my life. Um, so right now, it's mostly I'm going to concentrate more on my fashion aspects and more rather than more reality. I mean, I guess I could go ahead and jump in a few shows here and there, but I don't know. Was, I just feel like all of a sudden this, this year has been just so dramatic, you know? I mean, we went from COVID to, to masks, to vaccines, to, it's just been really uh, a dramatic year. And I'm a very dramatic, outgoing person. So, and I demand a lot of attention. So <laughs> I think concentrating on one thing at a time is really the best thing right now. And right now I really feel that my fashion is really the most important. Well, I mean, what would you say your secret to success? I know a lot of people that are watching this from all over the world or people that, you know, have an interest in entertainment but a lot of people want to get into the entertainment so what advice I mean obviously you've done so much you know you've been extremely successful um, I mean you combed through this whole thing but I mean you've worked for many many years to be where you are so yeah. my question to you is what advice would you give for people that are getting into the business to the fashion because it's obviously very very competitive mm -hmm. and also what's been the secret to your success to be where you're at today you know I I I I wasn't born very lucky in my life mm -hmm. you, I mean most people think that you're born lucky because they think that if you're born with money you're automatically lucky and that wasn't my case at all I still had to go and bang through a number of doors and I still had to bang through a number of people to get where I am. And a lot of them shot me down right in the beginning. Um, and I would cry every time, you know, and it's normal, we're human, we feel and we're emotional. And, but you know what, I would always get back up and try again. And I think I've gone probably through at least a thousand people that have said no to me and that have tried to hurt me or have said, you can't do it, you can't make it, who have tried to steal from me. I mean, I've seen it all. I mean, this is Hollywood. I mean, if you want to see it all, just come here. Um, but the one thing is you've got to believe in yourself. And no matter what, 
anyone says or what anyone does mm -hmm. or however they try and jeopardize you, whether it's a lawsuit or they try to threaten you or whatever, or they just put you so, so down, you've always got to remember inside what you're here for. And you've always got to remember what what are your dreams and aspirations. And I know that with me that there was no choice. I look at it in a way where there wasn't an option of giving up for me. And I don't think that should be, when you know you're destined to do something. Listen, I feel like there are a lot of people and actors today that don't make it in acting until their 40s. Um, it's, it, they, they just don't make it, you know? I think a lot of the younger generation nowadays, because they see TikTok and Instagram, um, you know, they're used to the whole Britney and Justin, the Disney club, the few that made it. Otherwise, there's a few singers, you know, that, that are young. But besides that, if you look at any other type of job, any other type of uh, work, lawyers, they make it in their 40s, doctors, um, people, people, directors, everyone, fashion designers, you, you know, and it's a lot, I see kids really like in their young age, they put so much stress on themselves that they have to be this or they have to do this. Just remember, you didn't come from a young club that was known worldwide, you were born with nothing and you have to build an empire and it's not done overnight. So when you have all these doors crashing on you and you have people hating on you and when you feel so upset and you want to fall to the ground, I feel like that sometimes all the time. You just got to get back up again and say, you know what, screw it, I got this. And just like during COVID, when things are not happening, move around and make it happen. There is always a way to make it happen. No does not exist with me, it's not in my vocabulary. And you have to have that inside your heart and your soul. And once you have that, it, it, it's impossible for the world to say no. You can knock on a thousand doors and one will open one day. So with your, your fashion line, I'm, how do you get inspiration? What, what inspires you? Where do you get your ideas from? Mm. I just look at photos of you, Larry. Wow. Well, you and a lot of other people. Um, I, I, could, I could see yeah. that you see, you see how, you know, yeah. It's a problem I've just had all my life, you know, with, with the people saying that. But, um, uh, but uh, like, what do you watch on TV? What's your favorite show these days? What have you been watching? Um, mm, what is my favorite show? I just, actually, I'm really excited for tonight. Because tonight I'm going to watch season two of Who Killed Sarah? Mm. Okay. So I'm very excited. They just released it. I just finished Money Heist. Um, that was amazing. Woo. I think I watched that uh, literally in a spam of um, two days nonstop. It took away two days of me binging. Um, wow. And I watched, uh, what, what, what was else was The Gambit was really good that we both agreed on. We I love Ann Taylor. I thought she was an amazing actress in that. Um, Bridgerton, I'm in love with that guy. Um, I don't know what his name is, but just the costumes I thought were really excellent. And um, I'm not really a TV person, to be honest. I'm more social. Um, what about music? What are you listening to these days? Or who are you listening to? Um, you know what, Larry? It's really sad. I just go on YouTube and type in classic jazz. There you go. I you know, that's it. To... That's as far as I go there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really have a preferred, I'm more of an 80s, 90s chick. I'm more of the Cure, Brian Adams, uh, you know, um, I don't know. I, I like Aerosmith. I like uh, Guns N' Roses. I, I'm i more of Blondie fan. Um, today's music's not really my thing. I do love jazz. I love opera. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not into mm. electronic music. I can do some of it. Um, Definitely Tiesto. I love him. I love Steve Aoki. I love, um, who else do I love? Oh, God. I have to think about it for a little bit. I like Afrojack. Um, but, so yeah, I like I like electronic music. Um, but that's about it. <laughs> you mentioned reality shows. I mean, do you have any aspirations to do acting yourself and more like some of these shows that you're talking about? Would you do some acting if someone asked you? I mean, I actually even took acting classes and um, I kept inviting Larry to my show and I would never show up. 
Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was hilarious. <laughs> she was taking acting lessons. Yeah. And <clears throat> say, today I'm going to do a scene, come and see me, and I would go, and she wouldn't <laughs> be there. Okay, well. That, I'd go hide. That's, but yeah. no, I definitely would get an Al Pacino movie. So. Oh, excellent. Um, so you've taken acting classes, though. I've taken right? acting classes, okay. yes. I've done acting classes. And then I'm supposed to do this reality show um, that they're writing um, all the scenes for. So the gala starts on June 19th. It's a surprise. I can't. I don't know if I'm allowed to say what show it is. So, but it's basically like Selling Sunset, but with art. So I'm going to be in a few episodes of that. So I'm pretty excited about it, and I'll be hosting the party, which Larry, you're invited to, of course. Oh, uh, well, Larry. Will and the same producer of that is making a movie. She asked me to play a part in it. So I, I'm thinking about it. Um, um, but again, I I always wanted to, you know. Um, my reality, if I was, my reality shows are more, um, are more based on, um, not conflict and drama. Um, I wanted a reality show based more on art and giving back and kind of showing the world my, um, what I'm good at, you know, that's what I would want. <laughs> now. Oh, sure. Thanks, well, you know, Larry. I, stuff I have to ask. I mean, I want you to put your hands up and show everybody those nails because those are truly amazing. Those are the longest nails that I've ever seen. Now, yeah, um, here's the question. Name one thing that you can do with those nails that you look at and you go, I wish I didn't have these right now. I'm um, trying to embarrass you. Can so you type with those? You I can, can type with these. Oh, so they are. I can, wow. I can type. I can text. I mean, I can. So when you're on your phone, you can text. I can't pick up, like, pennies or when I park the car. That's a problem, picking up stuff. Oh, okay. It's a little bit hard. And getting the credit card out of the machine. So I just carry tweezers everywhere in my purse. <laughs> So it just makes it a little well, easier. Yeah. That was a profound question, Larry. I, I'm just you looking know at the nails and going, you know, that's boy, those would be great to like do back scratching. Yeah. A lot of people <laughs> do ask me to do that. They're like, you scratched my head and my back. I'm like, sure. So just going back to, you were talking about reality, you know, shows that you did that uh, show for a couple of years uh, with that company. But it, it reality show now I, I don't really know is are you being yourself or you're portraying someone out I mean it's just based on you exactly when they do reality shows Larry I mean maybe you guys can <coughs> tell me a little bit more because I'm they write I'm in the music space so write. I don't really it's called loosely scripted there loosely. you go okay. <laughs> so what what is that so you're being yourself so if there's a reality show around you <laughs> it's you, but you are ad-libbing certain scenes. Well, let's be honest. I mean, you look at these shows like Survivor and stuff like that, and, you know, there's this cliffhanger where so-and-so is, you know, could fall off the mountain and die, and the audience is in shock. But they forget there's like 100 people on the TV crew that are there, and they're making sure they're not going to die. Mm -hmm. So it's it's reality in some sense, but it's, so basically, it's pretty well produced. If I, if I was to tell you to kiss Larry and then fight with him, you would have to basically do it, but in your own way. Right. So that's like one sentence. This is like, this is what we're doing today, guys. You're gonna fall over with Larry today, you're gonna kiss him, and uh, then you're gonna fight with him. And then we, you just go along with it. <laughs> I see, I see. And, so you know, there are so I really, you know, I, just how you embarrassed me with the nails there, I think, you know, maybe you guys should. You know, just for the entertainment sake. No? no I don't think so. All right, I tried. That's not but, us. Uh, you know, there are people ah. that, like on the team whose job it is is to <laughs> elicit the conflict. Oh. So, you know, I call them the, the person with the pin that sticks you in the butt, you know. Yeah. So it could be as simple as going, you know. The producers going, are quite, like, they do get a little feisty. So, you know, I could go, you know, Kayla, do you know what that guy Elmore said about you? He said you're a uh, whatever. So I get her pissed, and you have no idea why she's angry at you and stuff. But a lot of that stuff, it's forced. It's th it just doesn't happen naturally. But all then the time. she's being herself, though. Well, I'm, right? a, I'm naturally Taylor. dramatic. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm naturally a show <laughs> itself. So I, you don't need a producer to tell me to stir up anything. Okay. All right. <laughs> so wow. you know, re reality is a whole 
other thing. It's based on reality, but it's, you know, it's... But would that make you a good actor, too? I mean, if you're a reality show... Yeah. I've never really seen a real. I mean, have you seen reality show people transitioning into, like, real... Yeah, I think you're seeing more and more of it now. You, you're okay. seeing more oh, yeah. of it and stuff. Oh, really? Okay. Because once yeah. someone gets comfortable with the camera... Yeah. Then, you know, you're, you're a good actor when you could be very natural when you're just not that aware of the camera being in front of your face and yeah. I mean even you take this show you know that you and I have been doing if you go yeah. back to the first one yeah you know we were very aware of the camera yeah now it's at the point where we just don't even know that it's there and we just what it also helps so that the camera is like this small well yeah that, <laughs> that makes it easy to make believe there's no camera in the room but so you've seen you've seen like success stories where you've seen reality show people yeah. going into like films or TV stuff. Films, TV, sports. Okay. I mean, you, you know, you could look at some of the uh, you know the folks like Logan Paul and stuff who have now gotten into the fighting game and uh, stuff like that. Or you know, a lot of them host. Yeah. Like they host, they become judges on shows. Um, Logan Paul and those and uh, those the brothers they are more personalities right so those personalities are YouTube personalities right started that way yeah so but the fighting is but but have they done like films and stuff or are they acting yeah and, they're doing acting and oh, okay. there's a lot of stuff yeah okay okay yeah, they, a lot of TikTokers now are becoming actors like, okay because you know what the the um, studios want the followers. Because they have a big following. So if they, right? if they got 100 billion followers, they're like, well, this girl, even though she's a better actress, I'm going to take this girl instead. Because right. this enters more money into my film. Yeah, if you're going to open So movie, it's actually kind of a little sad. Um, I feel like this generation is a bit, I think it's a bit, you know, I don't feel like, I don't know who the celebrities are anymore. <laughs> But don't you get a huge following if you're doing stuff offline? Like if you are a good actor, like someone like The Rock, who's a, a big star, yeah, he's well, got a huge following online mm -hmm. because of who he is, right? Not the other way around. But it's, it's now working both ways. You're starting it, to find yeah. influencers that are expanding out of but this, some actresses, that online world. Some actors don't. Like for Charlize uh, Africa, Charlize Theron, that's her Instagram name, doesn't have many followers. Yeah. She's got like, what, 10 million? That's not yeah. a lot. That's actually, no. that's considered. I'm a star of her stature. Like, she needs to be a, at least at 100 million. I mean, for who she is, I mean, I love her. Yeah. You know, Reese Witherspoon doesn't have a lot, Nicole Kidman doesn't have a lot. And then you're talking about A list celebrities here. That Do they in... even need that? Or but see, don't... here's the difference everyone knows the name worldwide Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. We all know Leonardo DiCaprio worldwide, from, from China to, to, to France to, to Russia, but no one knows who Logan Paul is. Right. So we can go to Russia, and I can go into a restaurant in Russia, and we're like, you know Leonardo DiCaprio? They'll be like, yeah, I love, I love Titanic. I love that movie. But I'll be like, so do you like, do you like Logan Paul? And then they'll look at me, and they'll be like, who, who's, yeah. who's this? So, you know, they're, 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 I think it's just the American culture. We're so social media lies now that I feel it's it's so much I mean I personally look at my phone and I try and eliminate my screen time um, because I feel like it's unhealthy um, and these kids come up with so much content and content and content all day long and they start very young in high school I mean these that's why they're only, they're only 20 years old and they have hundreds of millions of followers and it's just kind of like what because they're just all, every day making content, making content. And I don't really consider it a talent. I consider it more of this is something that is going to be great for the meantime, maybe for another 10 years, and mm -hmm. then it's going to die out. And then there's going to be something new. Um, kids these days aren't, you know, using books. They're not playing in the garden. They're not, you know, writing cursive. They're not, you know, they're on their phones on Instagram all day. Um, I have 2 million followers. That's not so bad. Um, it's not so that's great, pretty impressive. but that's not so bad. On IG? Yes. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Thank you. Um, but compared to everyone else, I think that would I would be as a just normal. Um, mm -hmm. um, today, you know, you're expected to in agencies um, if you are if you want to sign uh, with agencies uh, and 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 stuff. I believe you need to have some between a million to something ten million. Um, they, they, they require some of them. So it's pretty <coughs> insane that even in entertainment they're requiring that you have 
um, a certain amount of following because they want to know that you're liked. And it's uh, it's a very demanding thing, but I just, I couldn't sit every day making content. I'd rather sit and draw every day mm -hmm. or make clothes or, yeah. or or come up with- Well, it's a full-time job, I mean. It, I, yeah, no, I've been to some YouTubers' house, uh, YouTubers' houses and TikTokers' houses and their, their, um, their bedrooms, their living rooms look like the studio. They've turned their entire apartments mm -hmm. into the studio. Yeah. And it's like they have 100 million people following them, but then they live in a $2,000 apartment. It's yeah. really funny. So with, with COVID, you know, I wouldn't say coming to an end, but, I, you know, certainly things have gotten better. And uh, a lot of us have gotten the vaccines now and the, the mask rules are relaxed and stuff. Um, what are the first things you're going to be doing that uh, you haven't been able to do during COVID? Where are you going? Well, I am leaving on a little vacation. I'm going to go to Miami for a little bit. Um, as I said, I kind of want to like see a little bit down there, maybe get an apartment there, because uh, I feel like it's definitely more relaxed over there. Um, check it out. I know I have some filming to do here, so I'm excited for that. But I really, I. I mean, the movies opened up, but have you guys gone to the movies? No, I don't. I haven't gone, gone yet. I really no. want to go to the movies, but no. I want it to be normal, um, not like six feet apart. Uh, I'm excited for for all the um, networking again. I miss that. I'm a very social person, so and dinner parties. I love dinner parties, so that I really miss. I miss bowling. I miss. I just I just miss fun activities, silly things, you know, and. Um, I think it'll be great just to reconnect. It's been a really lonely year. I know a lot of people, it either went two ways for a lot of people. Um, ever, like a lot of people either got married or pregnant um, or a lot of people either, you know, said, no, you're not my partner and we're very lonely for a year and a half. I was one of those. So um, it's been an interesting year to kind of discover myself and kind of get to know myself better and who I am and kind of what I really want in life. And it's... Um, it's been interesting, you know? It's been an interesting journey this past year and a half. And um, I think for the whole entertainment world, it's been a, quite a shock. I don't think we've ever seen this because there literally was no entertainment. <laughs> there was nothing. Thank God for Netflix. Because <laughs> yeah. it was it was really sad. It was a very sad year, and um, but also a very bright year for some people. Um, I guess Zoom did very well. I, am. Yeah, I guess think. Charmin Ultra did very well. Congratulations. <laughs> um, a few companies did really well. Amazon um, did very well, too. Amazon, Jeff Bozos, yeah. Mm. Yeah, he did really well. I did a documentary on him with uh, Imageworks. I hosted that one and uh, with his wife, um, uh, Sanchez. What's her name? I, I completely Lauren Sanchez. Lauren Sanchez, yeah. And uh, how happy they, they are together. So he did very well. Um, yeah, it was a very interesting year. Well, I'm just going to say this. I didn't do very much. <laughs> I did a lot of, um, I did do a lot of charity work. I am, um, I did do a lot of that virtually and I did do, let's see, what else did I do? Um, I did do a lot of sketching collections. I did a lot of future deals for 2022, um, fashion deals, but it was, um, I traveled a little bit, um, you know, Santa Barbara, you know, going to a hotel where there's no pool or restaurant, did mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, went to Mexico where it was also six feet apart. That was interesting. Um, but I really did not have like a phenomenal year, like get pregnant or get engaged mm -hmm. like some people did. Congratulations to Ariana Grande who did. <laughs> she just got married. Um, but no, nothing really spectacular happened on my part. So I, I'm definitely a social person, need everything open. So I, I'm happy to see this world open up again. Sure. Well, Kayla, it was great to catch up with you again and hear about all the fun stuff that you're doing. And uh, Omar and I just want to thank you for yeah. coming by and saying hello to us and the audience and getting the chance for them to learn a little bit more about you. Thank you guys yeah, so much. Thank you so much for okay. coming. I really, really appreciate it. Um, it was so much fun. And Larry, even though I am turning 30 this year, I just want you to know that I still love myself and I will continue loving myself. And I am still worthy. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks again. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> we will be right back after this message from our sponsors.
Well, Larry, let's talk about the mergers this week. It's been an interesting week. Yeah, uh, about the mergers. I mean, first the uh, AT and T, and then I'm hearing about Amazon. So let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, can you tell us what's been going on? Sure. You know, you look at, um, you know, what I mean. The big one is the AT and T. Um, yeah. You know, getting rid of the Warner Media properties and you know merging them in with Discovery Networks and stuff, which is really quite amazing. I mean, especially for me because I lived through. Uh, that was part of the cable industry when uh, John Hendricks started Discovery and it was, you know, John just had this vision for that channel and at that point it was just a simple channel and you look at it now, it's, you know, one of the biggest media players in the world. Uh, you know, I mean, kudos to David Zaslav and uh, his ability to take that thing and run with it and build it into the I mean, the, the Goliath that it is today, it's an amazing deal. I think they're valuing it at like $130 billion or something like that. <clears throat> and who would have ever thought that Warner, that great name, and, you know, uh, HBO and CNN and yeah. Cinemax and, you know, all those properties would... Um, you know, end up getting gobbled up by discovery. It's pretty amazing. What do you think the thinking behind it is? I mean, why is it that AT&T went along with a deal like that? Well, I think, you know, there are several reasons. Number one, you know, if you look at AT&T historically, um, they've never really been a good content company. I mean, there's a huge disconnect between, you know, what they're good at and content creators and dealing with cre with creators and things like that. Um, you know, that, that's one. But even beyond that, um, you know, the AT&T uh, financial structure was one that they had, they were carrying so much debt that they really had to unload some of that debt. And what they did was they basically, while they still have a major position in, you know, this new discovery Warner Media Company, um, they're passing it over, they're, they're eliminating a lot of their debt, they're taking their debt down and they're passing over the asset to a company that's really very, very good at dealing with uh, creative people and content and, and those issues. So I think the deal really works for everybody on this So one. the reason is more financial for AT&T, it sounds like, right? I, I think finance, I think they realize, you know, that they gotta focus on their core business and, um, you know, and then, you know, part of it is getting rid of a lot of that debt. By doing it this way, they just eliminated a huge headache for them. And again, they're still a major owner um, there, but they're passing along the responsibility for managing the company and building that company to Zaslov and Discovery folks. And uh, uh, it's a good move. It's a really smart move. I was honestly a little surprised when I read about it because I thought, well, because this merger just happened with AT&T not that long ago, right? What they gobbled up HBO yeah. and Warner and all of that, and now they're unloading it or passing on the responsibility to the discovery. Yeah, you know, when you're publicly traded companies and you're yeah. carrying debt that's so large um, and the pressure is on you to show good quarterly results, uh, you know, a lot of times it, it forces your hand. It yeah. makes you make decisions maybe before you're ready to make them, but you really need to do it. But again here, I think this is a win-win. I mean, AT&T still maintains a tremendous financial interest in that business, but they've really put it in their hands with people who have proven time and time again that they really do understand the content business, the distribution business, and you know how to relate to audiences. So it's not going to change what's going on inside Warner Media or HBO or any of those companies, right? The way they operate, would that change at all? That'll stay pretty much the same. Although you know, my feeling is you know, for a lot of the creative folks. Um, you know, particularly the HBO folks who have always been, you know, kind of at the front of the the creative curve. Uh, I think it's actually better. You know, they're working for, you know, a group that uh, I admire. You know, the, the Discovery people have really shown they know how to deal with creative people and let them do what they know how to do, but yet do it all with fiscal discipline and, and stuff yeah. like that. So again, I think it's a, it's a case where everybody wins in this one. Yeah, because I've been hearing lots of pros and cons, but it's good to get a really good perspective from you. And now I want to go to what's happening with Amazon buying 
uh, MGM. Yeah, that, that that's actually surprised a lot of people. But you know, um, uh, it's interesting because it, you know, in a different week, that probably would have been the headline. But when you have a hundred and thirty billion dollar deal between you know Warner Media, um, you know, I think the Amazon deal went for about twelve billion dollars and stuff. And they bought a great old company with a tremendous library. I mean. Uh, you know, the Bond, all the Bond films are in that MGM library and there's some really great old stuff and uh, and stuff. So, you know, when you're sitting on huge cash piles, um, you, you got to get it out. You can't just let it sit in the bank. And uh, they made a smart acquisition. I think the Amazon streaming services um, have been doing well. Um, but, you know, you can't just depend on being able to produce hit after hit after hit. So by buying this library, they've got enough to really keep it going and not have to depend on developing so many hits so quickly and so that they can take a little more of their time in doing so. So that's really the reasoning behind it. Because I don't even know, is MGM still producing films? I mean... Yeah, they, do, they do films and TV and stuff, and they have some, some new stuff. But, you know, the real value in MGM is, uh, you know, my feeling is the library is just an amazing library of stuff. And that'll serve, you know, the Amazon uh, streaming services well for... I mean, not just years, but decades. So they they will take the the existing like library from MGM. They put it on the Amazon platform, right? Amazon Prime, and is that so? That becomes exclusive now to Amazon now, it or how does that work? Well, Amazon makes that decision. But I mean, look, first the the MGM library. There are a lot of deals that have already been made. Yeah. So that. Um, you know, those some of those license agreements probably go for another eight, nine, ten years. So you can't just take those away. Those things have to run their course and run out before Amazon can really make the decision that they just want to have it all exclusively to them. I mean, because that library is licensed all over the world and, uh, you know, just about every territory. And so it depends on how many years are left on the licenses. So they go back and basically own all the content that MGM has, right? All the old movies, because was it in the 30s and 40s and 50s? Oh, yeah. They had like some of the best. Were they the number one studio back then? Yeah, M MGM was just, you know, an amazing studio. And, you know, they were turning out hit after hit after hit. And, you know, and then they had the Bond franchise, which is an amazing, amazing And they franchise. still do, right? They still do. And, uh, so they've got they've got that, and then they've been doing some good t TV stuff, and you know they had shows like Gladiators and stuff. So they're a pretty all around um, media and entertainment company, uh, content creators, and uh, they've got you know like I say a very very valuable library that uh, is going to serve the Amazon folks really well for decades. So you think that this was a smart move by Amazon by doing this? Yeah, you know, if I'm sitting with all that cash in the bank, you just don't want it to sit there. They bought a valuable asset that blends well with their existing business. So you see that trend going to other companies as well? Do you think other, I don't know. I mean, look, Netflix is just keep churning these new shows, you know, I mean, do you see them going after a, a studio or a, a company like that as well, or? You know, I think they don't have to. Netflix has kind of found their own way, and they've been incredibly, incredibly effective at uh, the providing uh, the, the resources to the production world uh, to make new and creative stuff, and they've done that really, really well. So. Do they need to buy a library? I don't think so. Um, you know, but again, you know, it's a matter if you're sitting with a lot of cash in, in the bank, why not uh, do something like that? So instead of licensing it, you're owning, you know, your own content. Um, but, you know, the world has become global. I mean, the media and entertainment world is not a U.S.-centric world anymore. Yeah. And, you know, if you want to be a player, you've got to scale up. I mean, one of the reasons that, you know, Warner... Uh, did this deal with, uh, you know, with Discovery, is that it's just become harder and harder for an independent production entity in TV and film to be able to compete with some of the, the big companies out there. Yeah. So, um, you know, you, 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 the rule is you got to get bigger. 
um, and stuff. So I don't think we, we've seen the end of the mergers. I think we're going to see some more and probably some pretty surprising ones. Yeah, I think this was a pretty, pretty big, and especially with the Amazon, um, you know, buying MGM, that was pretty surprising. But in in a sense, MGM hasn't been doing a lot of new stuff. I don't know if it's for financial reasons, but maybe this was a pretty good deal for them as well to to be, you know, part to become part of Amazon. Sure, you know, for the shareholders, you know, to, to now have that kind of resource and, um you know, not just financial resource, but the resource to reach audience. I mean, Amazon is a global company, and you look at their streaming service, it's, you know, it's um, it's all over. It's growing and stuff. So, again, for, you know, for those folks and the shareholders of MGM, again, good deal. It's kind of like when Apple bought Pixar, right? Yeah. Kind of thing where they, they wanted to do projects through Pixar, but then they finally decided, hey, it's probably better we just buy the company, right? Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, thank you, Larry, for that insight. You know, it's been very interesting. Another interesting show, guys. I'm really happy to be part of this amazing show. We, we come every week and uh, we share great value and the entertainment world with you guys so thank you again for watching larry thank you again for yeah. being here and we're gonna keep doing it right yeah it's fun you know I, I would love to you know have some folks in the audience who watch this kind of let us know what it is um that they're interested in what do they want to see yeah please let us know uh what you guys want to see some of the comments uh and some of the questions you have we'll be happy to answer for you each week. So thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time. Adios.